Hi, Jennifer. Um, I know that you aren't connecting with this assignment in some way. It's not making sense to you. And hopefully I don't explain it in the exact same way that I've already explained it on this page, on these instructions. But I would like to briefly explain it one more time. Maybe it'll click this time. Maybe it won't. But, um, you know, you're going to set up your wiki page, but that's just a technical thing. That doesn't really have to do with the rationale behind the assignment. So, you know, watch this video, learn how to set it up. Um, and then what I want you to do is select a unit plan um, that relates to the area that you're going to be a teacher in. And I know you're going to be an early childhood teacher. So I want you to find a plan that should take at least, you know, four hours to implement. And the purpose here is that you are going to read this plan and you're going to try to think about um, the way that technology is being used in it and then try to think of, um, kind of try to dialogue with that and try to ch maybe challenge that the way it's used or uh, explain why you think that the use makes a lot of sense or why maybe it's developmentally inappropriate or, or whatever. I want you to think about it and, uh, you know, work with the ideas there and then maybe come up with some suggestions. But you're going to do it in the, when you set up your, your wiki page, you'll be using this template here. And I know you probably already know all this, but I'm just being a little redundant. So you're going to use this understanding by design um, standards template. It's a great tool for just evaluating um, unit plans or even lesson plans um, because it makes you think about what's the whole point of this unit. Is it just a fun little unit about um, fruits that grow on trees and we all reread re re books about fruits that grow on trees? Or is does it have a deeper meaning? And so the, hopefully this, this um, rubric here will help you to think about um, the deeper meanings of, of the unit plan and the purposes and is it designed well and, and are the assessments lined up with the purpose. So, um, you know, first you evaluate it and you just, all you do is you type over here in the far right column. And then I also want you to uh, talk about the technology integration down here. And there's five uh, or six little questions and there's um, another one about assistive technology. Can you think of ways in which assistive technology would be appropriately used in the lesson or the unit that you've selected? So it's a way to kind of summarize the class in a way. Um, it it's, it's represents the uh, culmination of everything we've done and, um, you know, incorporates unit plan in unit plan design and uh, the incorporation of technology into that and that kind of thing. So let's talk about what you found. Let's see here. You found these unit outlines, which look pretty cool. But the problem with these that's going to make it hard for you is that they're not really written like a unit plan or a lesson plan. They don't really have the plan. They, they have they have fabulous elements. They, this, this, these unit outlines have fabulous elements that if I, as an instructional designer or teacher, would benefit greatly from this, and any teacher would. But when it comes down to how am I going to implement this in the classroom, what steps do I actually take with the students to enact this, these units? That's not really clear here, I don't think. Yeah, it's not. It's not telling you um, what to do. It's more like um, it's more like reading a Georgia performance standards document. You know, it's like reading performance standards almost. It's a little more concrete than that, but it's pretty much like that. And you know, no nobody could read the GPSs really and and whip a lesson out of that on the fly. And so what you probably want, I mean, if you want to struggle with this, I mean, maybe it's not a struggle to you, but if you want to try to use this and critique this somehow and to think about ways technology can be used, that's fine. But I'm not sure you'll be able to do the uh, unit plan analysis up top. So let me give you an example of a unit plan that I think um, might make more sense. Um, here's from readwritethink.org, uh, a, uh, a lesson plan. It's actually a, a unit. It's uh, six 50-minute sessions. And it's about examining plot conflict through comparative contrast, a comparison contrast essay. And right off the bat, there, as a as an ed technologist, I think of I can think of some ways in which this could be made more technological um, without even reading the unit plan. And so, as I re as I'm reading the unit plan and the steps that you take to enact it, um, I you know I'd be curious what kind of technologies they use, but. It, this plan has multiple tabs. I actually clicked over to the instructional plan because that's really the heart of the plan. But all these other things are also very important. The preview will let you know more about just what this thing's about, just give you an overview. Um, standards will align to certain standards, probably national standards. I didn't even look at it. 
I doubt that they align it to, um, yeah, they don't align it to the states, but you can probably go check it out and see how it aligns there. Let's check that out real quick. Oh, there we go. So it aligns to grade three in Georgia. Grade four. Etc. Anyway, I'm getting distracted from my point. All right, so anyway, you've got all these different tabs that relate to this particular unit plan, but it's the instructional plan that is the heart and soul, and so you've got these objectives here for what this plan's about, and then each session has steps, so it's kind of like the recipe for uh, how, how does it, what does the teacher do, and what do the students do, and what are the tools that you use in enacting this plan, and so this is useful. This this is this is your recipe for how you behave. This outline does not provide that. You know, if you were a substitute teacher and you were handed this and said, okay, the lesson you need to teach today when you sub for me is based on this outline, the teacher would have no idea what to do. If you gave a sub, honestly, most subs wouldn't be able to teach a lesson. I mean, many subs, they're, they're not really, it's not really their purpose anymore. They don't do that. Um, unfortunately, they're more there to kind of watch students do worksheets and stay busy while the teacher's gone. But ideally, you could hand uh, a lesson plan like this where you've got the steps written out and somebody else could actually implement it. And so that's, that's the big difference between what you have selected and what I'm showing you here. Um, so here's session two. It's got 13 steps. And notice there's links out to different resources. And um, session four, wow, it's a multi-step session, sessions five and six, and then some extensions, um, some student assessment activities. So there's a lot here for you to talk about and work with for the unit plan analysis assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the link to this particular, this particular plan. And um, I'll go ahead and just stop talking in this video and, and just leave that with you for now. If you have any, any further questions or if you want to visit on the phone or something, uh, just let me know. Um, and I know I gave you the link. Yeah, I gave you the link to the others. Uh, if you don't like that particular plan, um, you might try exploring some of these other ones. They, they are a mess. I know it's kind of a mess when you try to go hunt for uh, unit plans and lesson plans. But, um, you know, you got to start somewhere. It, it is a mess, but that, that is the nature of, of this work. All right. Thank you. Paige, I know the semester is almost over, but I thought it'd be worth the time still to go ahead and make sure you understand how you can get feedback in your online classes at University of West Georgia. Um, because I think that because of the way you've asked your question about why you got a zero for the tech cast, I'm thinking that you might not understand how you can check your grades. So I'd like to show you just to make sure that you know how to get feedback from your professors so that in the future in other classes, you don't have an issue with with knowing where you stand and then what you can do. Like if say, let's say you make a zero on assignment, maybe a professor writes a note in the Dropbox that says you can redo it, which is what I did. So I wanna make sure that you understand that. So let me, I'm gonna first show you, I don't wanna confuse you too much, but you know, since I'm an instructor, I have multiple tabs. You're a student, you only have a student view. So I'm gonna first show you what I see from my side of things, um, just so you understand why you got a zero. And then I will show you from your side of things what you can do to make sure you're staying on top of your feedback. And we'll only have Blackboard at UWG for one more semester, but even if you take one online class, it's worth it for you to know this. So, um, And, you know, future learning management systems, like the one we get in spring of this coming year, will be working a very similar way. Um, okay, so when I come to your Dropbox, and I'm trying not to show your name, your full name, um, what I see here for your submission is that you didn't put anything in here. And that's how I wanted you to submit your, um, your TechCast assignment. Well, let me see if I can quickly go look at the instructions. Because I, I claim that. I claim that I wanted you to put it in the Dropbox. And I want to make sure that on the TechCast assignment that I told you guys that. Like at the bottom of the instructions, um, if you keep going and you finish it. Yeah. It's, it's one of the last things I ask you guys to do is to make sure you paste the link to it into your Dropbox because then that lets me quickly access it from your Dropbox. If you just submit an empty one, then I have to try to think, okay, where can I find her, her link? And it just makes sense for you to put it in the Dropbox. Um, okay, so, um, you know, when I uh, completed the grading form, 
I said, nothing submitted here. If you would still like to submit, please email me the link by July 22nd. Um, and so you could send that through that course in mail if you wanted to do that. Um, now let's go look at the student view. So let's see what you're seeing on your end. And the way it's supposed to work is you want to go, you know, keep on top of my grades. And there's two ways you could check your grades. But one way is to go to my grades. And then, you know, you see your grades posted here. And this is the demo student. This isn't a real student. So there's not a lot of grades in here for this fake student. But your grades will populate here throughout the semester. And then for assignments that have a grading form, like the TechCast assignment, um, you can click View Graded Grading Form. And then it will give you, um, you know, the rundown up here on this little grid, sort of checklist type thing of what you did and didn't do. And so in your case, you just, since I didn't get anything, I put all zeros on all of these different criteria. But then down here at the bottom, there's comments also. So here on this demo student, I just wrote FF. But on most students, I'll, I'll write something. And like in your case, I did write something. And, and I think that you didn't get, you didn't see it somehow. Um, so you just want to make sure that you that you access that feedback in that way. And it could be in, a, in the past that you've taken a class and the instructor didn't use a grading form. Uh, and maybe they just use the Dropbox feedback thing, which I think when you do that, when you just use the Dropbox but not the grading form, I think that the feedback is actually, actually shows up in text form right here on the, uh, right here. It just shows up here. And maybe you're used to that. So... All of this to say that you can, of course, uh, submit the link to your TechCast uh, page, and I will grade it for full points, no problem. Um, but I did want to just make sure that you, you understand when you're using a grading form, how you can get comments, and it's a form of communication that, that takes place during the semester. And, and I know we only have four days left, but, you know, better late than never, never I think, on this point. All right, thanks.